Ready? It's mind pump time. All right, in today's episode, uh, we have a lot of fun. But here's what we're going to give away to you, because you know we do that every day, every day. Every time we drop an episode, we give something away, and the way we do it is you leave a comment in the first 24 hours, and if we pick your comment, you win the free thing. And today's free thing is MAPS Strong. What a great program. Builds the body, makes you strong, solid, especially the posterior chain. That's all the muscles on the back of your body, including the back, the butt, and the hamstrings. You also get good shoulder work uh, with it. So don't forget to leave a comment. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You have to do those two things. One more thing before we get to the podcast. Uh, we are running a promotion. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle. All of those are 50% off right now. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy the podcast. You know that that clock behind you? That weird, um, what's it called? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like steampunk? Okay, what's your theory? Because I have it like preset for something very- No, 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 no. Very special. You didn't look at it, did you? You have a preset? Take a look at it right now. 10.45? That's the time. No. Guess you who? just ruined my clock. You really? It was a countdown to the apocalypse. Oh, okay. No, because I'm just Because you were saying- are you, are you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so you fixed it. Not me. Who? So you know we had the conversation. No way, Sal fix some tech yeah, things. I was, I was, my mind was about to just explode. <laughs> yeah, it's a body I, I snatcher. Think, <laughs> anytime person? Sal and I have to work on tech, yeah. I sometimes that works. Though. The, the the clip in Zoolander. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, like, uh, uh, yeah. like turning. <laughs> yeah, that's us. Yeah. So you know how we had the conversation about our kids. This was off air, right? About how our kids are just tech is so. Yeah. instinctual to them and right. intuitive like yeah. my, my my baby son my seven month old baby he hears my voice on the phone he knows to look for the screen to see my face like he knows he already knows how to hang up he's seven months old yeah he'll like push the button it's, or it's crazy and it's and it's because they grow with us we learn this stuff later it's like learning a language when you're later you have an accent right these mm -hmm. kids grow up with it so they just no accents too, totally yeah, it's intuitive. Just fluid so i came in here with my daughter and my son because my son's getting trained by Serene. So me and my daughter, who's 11, are in here hanging out. And I said, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks if you can figure out how to program that complicated steampunk looking. <laughs> okay. No way. Okay, 30 seconds. 30 <clears throat> seconds later, she goes, uh, this is the right time, right? And I'm like, yeah. What? How did you do that? She's like, oh, you push this button, that button, and then it gets the So now. You go beep, beep. It's like a whole sequence. She just figured out. Totally figured it out. She's wow. like $300 an hour, this girl. Dude, Dude there's <laughs> literally two buttons on there, and I was like this. Like, uh, uh, yeah. uh, nothing. Yeah. It, it ended up in scrambled uh, code. So I got so I got to give her 20 bucks now. But she figured wow. it out. And the That's way. That's impressive. It, and what's cool about it is, besides the way it looks, it looks really cool, it, it's a 24 hour. Mm -hmm. So it's not a 12 hour, right? And so what it does is when it gets to midnight, oh. it's it's zero. Oh, I see. And then yeah, when it, it, it starts then over. it starts one, two, right? And it goes all the way up. Uh -huh. So but that's it. She figured it out. I couldn't believe it. Cool. 30, is that how 30 mil seconds. Military clocks, don't they work that way? Is that how it works? Yeah. Or, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how they do it in other countries too, is they go twenty four hour. Yeah. They don't say AM PM. They just say well, yeah, fifteen o'clock. Courtney still uses I mean her her watch and her phone, like, you know, do military time. So basically, yeah, it's just it and that always confuses the hell out of me. It's like fifteen thirty or whatever. Why does she do that? Because in nursing, they, they run by that. So she just kept oh, it like that. The truth is, it's way more efficient and, yeah. and better. Because you don't get a mistake of was that PM or AM. Yes. Now, here's the thing. This is one thing I love about America. We don't care. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys have your metric metrics. system back. Yeah, metric yeah. system, super yeah. easy to understand, right? Yeah, it is. It's no. pretty straightforward. No, but we're, no, we're going to stick to we our refuse standard. complicated. Yeah, we're yeah. going to go yeah. complicated. Yeah. Inches. That's why nobody likes America. I think we're all arrogant. <laughs> That's not true. It's, it is true, dude. No, dude. There's some truth. They very, don't. very few places. I don't see anybody. I mean, they're not swimming across the ocean and drowning to go anywhere else. Are they? Well, yeah, to come here. But no. if you're, if you live, but maybe if you live in that comment that makes us hate it. Yeah. If you live in another country though, and you, you, you're not a fan. Yeah. You know, but we're just are... the best of all the countries. That's oh all. my god! That's <laughs> all. That's all. <laughs> that's, no, that's, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. No, we're Ooh, I feel the burn. Hey, yeah, someone sent me a picture. Okay, who brought it up? Which one of you brought up the the mathematics uh, team that won? The... I did. Okay, did you look them up? Of course, I did. 
Okay, so are are they four Chinese kids? Uh, uh, four American kids. Chinese American kids. Yes, they are, huh? Uh huh. Uh, okay, so I speculated on that, like joking around, yeah. and somebody sent me a picture. I didn't know if it was like a meme, like because it said, "Oh, like we won the first time because like, China years. always wins." Yes. yes, and so, but we have yeah, they're Chinese American Chinese kids. American kids yeah. that yeah. But, win I mean, for us now. Is there a, is <laughs> there a, is, does any picture exemplify America more than that? I love, that, I love we, that. Yeah, like like we're. It doesn't matter how you look. Right, you're right, here. You're right, American. Right, yeah. Totally. And that's the only thing. But yeah, we, I, just a bit ironic. That's all. Just a tiny bit. I know. Bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It cracks me up. Yeah, that's like when we we finally won hockey. You know, and, and everyone got so mad. Why? Oh. Well, because we've never like we were like sort of the the joke of of hockey. You know, same thing with soccer. You mm. know, because like all the other countries have always dominated. And then the first time we beat Russia, I mean, that was like. Huge oh, deal. that was a big deal. Huge deal. Yeah, in soccer, yeah, our, on ice. our men's team keeps losing, right? Yeah, but right the, the women's team dominates the Women's team is badass. Yeah, they crush. Yeah. Um, and I think it's probably because we have the most uh, opportunities for, for sports for women, some of the best in the world. So you can find women going through this process of training. Now, when it comes to yeah. soccer for men, we don't have a market for, for men's soccer like they do in Europe. Well, it's just not as popular yeah. here to watch. Exactly. So. so because of that, then a lot yeah. then you're not going to see as much talent and focus. Yeah. After elementary that. school, we're kind of over it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, de yeah. we definitely yeah. do. We move, although, on, we move on to football. Although, listen, I'm not a sports fan, and I know your criticism of soccer is that they, they <laughs> fall down and pretend to get hurt all the time. <laughs> Which is valid. But I've been reading all these memes about LeBron doing that all the time. Is I that like know. a thing that That's... he does? Where he like falls down, oh, I'm hurt. And the Oscar goes to Le LeBron James. Yeah, he he is now. And by the way, I'm going to defend him right now, but I'm not a fan of 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 him anymore. Right? I'm definitely not a LeBron fan. He and he does cry a lot about it. In his defense, though, and this is just this has always been in the NBA. When you're a bigger, stronger player, the refs just tend to you get hit more that's just part part of the game it's like yeah when you're when you're a, a big physical specimen like a Shaquille like Shaquille O'Neal was probably I mean they, they invented you're a dominating they invented force. a strategy called hack a shack you know yeah. like it was like <laughs> right yeah there was yeah. A, there was that's a cool because well, yeah, also he couldn't shoot free throws very well right. so it's like we'd rather have him on the free throw line shooting because the likelihood of him making both was not oh. that great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean push them they just yeah. push try to just push him yeah. and so I mean Le LeBron does cry a lot and then there's tons of memes around him and he's annoying but it's it's also because he is just a physical beast and he's he in, dominating yeah he imposes his will physically on people and so i think the i think the and i think i think the way the refs call it is totally fair if you're somebody who's like that if you're going to drop your shoulder and drive into the lane and mow over guys that are 50 70 pounds lighter than you are yeah yeah, you're gonna get. You're not gonna get all the fouls called. We're gonna your give way. you a foul for a little finger that's that right. raised your forehead. That's right. Yeah. So you know, I don't feel sorry for him whatsoever, but because that's been happening to big men in the NBA yeah. for for well, so since the beginning. So wasn't he? Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he go straight to the NBA after high school? Was that him? LeBron, no, Kobe did. That was Kobe. Okay, yeah. uh, but he Didn't was Mello. Was he another one? No, him. Well, no, actually, you're right. Mello and him came out the same yeah, year, I and they came did. Out, I th yeah. For some reason, I thought they did one year. Of but college, now, wasn't but they LeBron didn't. like a phenom in high school, and they were trying to get him? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he was okay. huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah in no, they high were. School. Yeah, they were. Bro, it's him. it's crazy when you when you can look at the genetic uh, spectrum. There was a kid. I don't remember. I don't have the article. This is bad on me. But there was this kid who was going into high school. So he's in eighth grade. He's, he was 6'3", 230 pounds. He's got his shirt off, and he's like, Argh. this kid is a monster, Yeah, and he's going to be a freshman. Yeah. Like He's bigger than I could ever get training, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he's like you know, 14 years old and yeah. would run me over. It's just crazy when you – because you could he hasn't even grown yet. What's he going to be like when he's a senior oh, or yeah. in college? It's going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah. Gonna be I don't a, know. Maybe, Doug, you can, you can find him. You could go uh, high school freshman – 230 pound uh, football player or whatever, and this is a picture of him like flexing. Just a powerhouse, huh? and you can tell he's a kid because he's got you know when kids are big, mm -hmm. uh, they're they're not like shredded, but you can see the potential. He looks like a big puppy. Yeah, that's what he <laughs> looks like. And you're like, oh my gosh, this kid is a is a complete monster. Well, a lot of times that's how they 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 draft these kids is based. They is, follow them early. Well, if not only they follow them early, but then they also like based off of their genetic potential. Like yeah. they'll they'll get down to measuring their finger length. Their vertical jump. That's well, right you know there. the NFL camps that have set up in like Samoa, 
uh, because of how many football players like that island itself has produced, right. it's like, hey, let, especially colleges too. They're just like they plant people there to 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 you know follow these Dude, kids. I, look at this kid. D- D- I don't know if you can expand that or whatever. He looks like Zion, bro. Look at the wow, size like, of that kid. Well, you, I mean, do you? Do you <laughs> oh my god! Do you know who? Do you know who Zion is? Do you watch him at all in basketball? No, I'm sorry, six. I'm sorry, I was wrong. He's six five two sixty. My oh. bad. He's oh way God. bigger than I said. Yeah, bro. follow that kid, dude. He's going to do something. Yeah, so I have read about Zion. Wasn't he the kid, the guy that blew out his shoe? Yeah, yeah, he cut that's, too yeah. Fast? We, we brought that up yeah. that one time, and so. his shoe couldn't like yeah, yeah. hold it, whatever. But the way he moves for his size is just insane. You've just never seen a, a guy that size move like that. So it's already crazy, like how big and dominant he is. Yeah. But when you see them, and let me tell you, in person, it's a whole other thing. Like it's one thing to see it on television. I, I know when they're mm-hmm. being compared to other, you know, crazy specimens. Yeah, you can't tell. Yeah, yeah. but when you get like in person and you yourself is standing right there and they walk by yeah, and that's like, the weirdest thing is when they move like we would move you know like uh, but faster, uh, they're faster. so much bigger <laughs> yeah and faster, faster and more agile Well, because like, it used to be that used to be different like you'd get guys that were like seven foot or whatever but they just like were all lanky and would move kind of awkwardly but you know they they still dominate but now they're athletic too and this is the thing like I, i'll communicate I've, I've been on all these podcasts right talking about the, the book right the resistance training revolution oftentimes they'll bring up like the Oh, people are afraid of working out with weights because they don't want to get too big, especially women. And I try to explain to them like there's there's such a small percentage of people that that's even an issue. Yeah, like you don't even see these people in real life ever. But yeah, you're right, Adam. When you see it in person, you know when I first that really hit me hmm. when we did uh, Map Strong and we worked with Robert Oberst. Oh yeah, okay, Robert Oberst. Watched him do the speed ladder. I know, dude. He's a huge human being, right? Yeah. he's a he's a world's strongest man competitor. And then he, we were in here filming agility drills mm-hmm. for Map Strong, and how nimble he was on his feet. Yeah. And then he goes over and starts doing pull ups. He did like five in a row, just yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, I'm like, like, oh my god, like three hundred and something yeah. pounds. I'm like, oh, this is yeah, this is different, too strong. <laughs> this doesn't yeah, make not to sense. take anything from their hard work, but there's definitely a, a massive genetic component. Yeah, right you there, combine sure. that with hard work, and it's like, yeah. it, it doesn't even make sense. But boy, does that make uh, uh, you know a huge difference. So oh, anyway, pretty yeah. crazy. Hey, that video of your son playing in front of the the light. Uh, oh, the yeah. juve light? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, so he, what do you do? Do you put it on and then you're doing your skin and then he just hangs out? Was so, he attracted to it? or was Yeah, no. So, that's, so uh, I mean, I've always had him in it. Way back when, I remember uh, Chokey, I think, made a, a post of him when he was first born. I remember asking the doctor if he, he thought it was okay. And he said, no, actually, it's really good for him uh, to do it uh, when, when I first had him. And so he's been around it since the beginning. And it started with me as he's gotten older now. It, he would walk in and see me standing in front of it, and then he'd come in and he'd play with me. So, uh, okay. uh, and it, obviously, he just thinks it's so neat. It makes the whole room glow red, and it's now set up in Katrina's office. Uh, and so he goes in there all the time, and he want he'll grab me by the hand, and he wants me to turn it on. So, you know, we'll go. Katrina and I like it's become this little routine now where he likes to do it so much. We just go in the office, all three of us. We'll switch it on, and now obviously, for the best benefits of it, you should stand like with six inches away from it and naked and all. This stuff like that, but right. it's still you're still catching those those the the light right when you're even in there. So we'll you know we'll switch it on whenever we go in the office and and play around in there. And he loves it. He's attracted yeah. to it. He thinks it's hilarious. I know. So I've been telling you guys, Jessica's been using it pretty regularly. We have the small you know little personal unit, mm-hmm. and I can tell it's not even subtle. It's a huge difference. More skin. A huge difference. Yeah. I, to the to the point where I actually thought she was putting on like foundation or something. I'd well, like, that's originally yeah. right. So before Juve came around and the the first introduction of like red light usage was more like dermatologists and skin, right? They were a beauty. They were in beauty salons. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't until later did all the research about about like recovery and stuff right. came later, and that's right. obviously what I think made it explode. It was like oh. We found out that not only is it great for skin and hair, but it's yeah. incredible also for recovery too. And yeah, so there's always performance benefits to it as well. Yeah, remember they signed with the Niners. Yeah, and I forget what other they have them in. There's all these panels that they have on the wall. That's really cool. It's like mounted already, so players just go in there and there's like a whole uh, like like uh, not rehabilitation, but like a, one of those like a recovery centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where they have a lot of those things like the Norma Tech boots and all these other kind of uh, uh, devices. That to help with the recovery process, but I thought that was super cool that they actually. I mean, put you that can. There. That's how. That's always a good sign. Like when you when you think something's going to take off, right? A company's going to explode is when like it, it, sport, an NFL or an NBA or like a professional sport adopts. Yeah, because money's on the line for them. Yeah, and they and exactly, and they're willing to spend that extra money to try getting that competitive edge. So I think speaking of like companies yeah. and uh, 
before they explode or whatever like that. Or I just bought, I try to share, I'll try and share this more often when I, when I do this. And by the way, I get questions all the time about stocks. Like I'm not, um, I'm not any, I don't follow me. I just share what I'm doing and, and the logic behind why I do it. He's the wolf of mind pump. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. In fact, my portfolio is not even doing that great right now. So don't, don't follow me. But, uh, I, I do believe in this, this idea of, okay, if there's companies that you believe in and you and you you like, right? And you've done your research on what they're doing, uh, and they've been around already for a while, right? Like it's it's a smart investment long term. This is not a I'm gonna like it's not AMC, right? I'm not advising people because that thing's up it's eleven. Like a stable company, yeah, yeah. Like so, like General Mills, right? So news came out not that long ago that they uh, they have committed by 2030 to have one million acres of regenerative uh, farmland. Mm. So, and I just, we, I think that's the direction we're going, right? So mm -hmm. if, uh, obviously that's a, a big conversation with climate change and things like that. So, you know, the, the farms that will continue, it's either, you're either pro vegan that side because of those things, or you think regenerative farming is the direction. And I, I'm like, I'm a, a fan of regenerative farming and that's the direction that I think they're going to start pushing almost all companies. So them committing to over one million acres of that by 2030, I just I just think that's going to be a smart. Yeah, it's bet. smart. I mean, it seems like the consumers are demanding mm -hmm. businesses really like move in that direction. You know, or they're going to get a lot of grief, uh, and people won't buy their products. Well, not only that, but I it's not out of the realm of you know perceptible or, or uh, what might happen is that we're going to see regulations and, and fines. Well, that's so that's that what I think. Okay, that's so my yeah, my theory is we're going to start to see that. Yeah, and it'll actually save them money because That's if they right. don't, totally. they'll get charged or they'll get rebates or some kind That's of That's why I like a bet like this. So I see, yeah. you see that. I feel like the writing is on the wall that we're moving in this direction where they are. They're going to tax the, the people mm -hmm. that are not farming that way higher and make it more difficult for them, which will force all these companies. So the companies that see that coming already and are already investing heavily in getting yep. that ready. So I think that's a, a yeah, good that's smart. Yeah, and, and the other reason why you'd want to invest in a company that you believe in and know about and use their products is it helps you ride the waves, right? Because right. the Even biggest challenge with investing is, and this is what the biggest mistake, It's in, everybody knows this, right? Buy low, sell high, right? So buy when something's cheap, sell when it makes money. Everybody knows that. Lots of people don't do it because they panic when it goes down and, and when it goes up, they, they want to buy something because it looks like it's doing really great. What helps you ride that is if you just believe in the company. So you know what's yeah. funny is so I only invest this way with uh, with Max's portfolio. My portfolio, I do all the asshole stuff. <laughs> you do yeah. all the crazy. I do. I do. All, yeah. yeah, my buddy calls me. Oh, this is a great buy. This and that. And I you <laughs> think I'm getting some great tips. See, if you look, at I do that dumb shit on my own portfolio, Max, because I'm I'm not thinking right now in the next five years. I'm thinking about twenty plus years for him. Right. So I don't mess around with the like. You're not as impulsive. Yeah, I'm not impulsive. I'm not speculating on what's going to happen in the next year or so. I'm just like, okay, this is already a sol All his companies are solid big companies and have been around for a while already. And then news yeah. comes out about a direction. Of 10 thing. years is just goes way past yeah. years. Yeah. So, you know, it's already that way. My oh, portfolio is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I might have a, a week where mine looks impressive and amazing, but then all of a sudden then it dips down and it's, that's you know, all, that's, that's so all impressive. I do because I hate watching that up and down. So like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day I invested in a cannabis company it was GW pharmaceutical, which I sold because they end up getting acquired and whatever. But it helped me stay with them because, and they fluctuated like crazy. Right. But I believed in the science so much that I rode the wave. If I wasn't one of those people that believed in that company, I would have sold way too low. I would have freaked out, you know, for sure. Anyway, you guys want to hear something? Speaking of freaking out, you want to hear something crazy? Mm. This, this is going to blow you away. Justin. Blow, blow me away. Blow you away. So I read this Excited. article, and this is the title of the article, okay? Computers will be able to read images from your brain within a decade. What? So within a decade, wow. computers will literally be able to print or decipher the image that's in your head. Like what you're thinking about at that mm -hmm. moment in time. So there's an artificial intelligence system from researchers at Kyoto University, this is in, in Japan, that, that through working through deep learning and, re, and generative networks, it can read the image in a person a person sees in their mind's eye and transform it into digital photographs with up to 99% accuracy. So in other words, a person thinks of an image, the computer through this technology will then print the image and it's 99% accurate. So are they tracking all of your body accurate? language? 99. Like like how how does this like <laughs> how does this algorithm work? And like what are they how do they determine like all these 
plot points of like, oh, he must be thinking this because and it like starts to draw well, it based off so of like he, so here's how your eyes are thinking they're, about it. They're not to the point where they could like interrogate you and say, did you do this? Did you do that? And then print what's happening in your brain. Mm-hmm. So far, what people have to do is they have to actively think about it. Actively, like think you have to say, like it. Adam, think of a pineapple right now. Yeah, yeah. And I think about a pineapple and then it draws. And then they and do it, right? it. But oh, okay. within ten years, they're going to get to that point. Now that to me is terrifying. Now what I think is interesting is that it's what? you're saying it's 99% accurate like so what if I thought of a pineapple and then it drew it and then Justin thought of a pineapple would they look exactly the you same? You would be the one to determine. You know so so or like you know because maybe he's a little more artistic than I am his pineapple looks more accurate no, than my No, I think what they would do is they <laughs> like, would right, say how yeah. does that work? Yeah, no. I, I think what they would do is they would say Adam think of something. And then the computer does it and then you'd be like, "Oh my gosh, that's so weird. I was totally thinking of a, a 1954 or whatever." So that's, I think, how they're doing the test. And this isn't like part of Neuralink where they have like a chip already like within your brain where it's like communicating. Are you all pro? Yeah, are you all wired up with this? I mean, you are wired up, but they're not putting anything that's invasive according to the article. So really, really weird. Dude, that's that's hard for me to believe. I need to see this. Really, really weird. So, and I mean, imagine the applications of a computer being able to literally read what you're thinking in your brain. Imagine that. Imagine being on trial. <laughs> That's just, dude, we have no more like privacy. Yeah, like you just you're taking things from my mind now? Well, according to Adam, they'll be able to advertise to you really well, I guess. That's yeah. right. That's, <laughs> right. That's, that's, right. that's yeah. always the only benefit. I mean, you're going to have to. You're going <laughs> to yeah. obviously have Ooh, to. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I did in. want those shoes. Hey, Whatever. just like the assholes that opt into Facebook and they get all that shit taken, it's the same thing. You're going to have to opt into it. It's not like they're going to be able to. It's not like we're going to be forced to have probes I all don't on know. Our what if they have these machines just like on every corner, like when you go into a store and it's like scanning you? And I'm like, no. Look, that's, your guys' techno- UFO brains going no, down. No, no, no. When te- technology that is that is this. Tin foil hats, dude. That is this powerful is way too irresistible for investigative agencies and deep state. You know, for sure, if they can read your mind, you don't. And you think the CIA yeah. is gonna be like, well, we need to ask the permit. No, they're gonna be like, we're interrogating these terrorists. Right. We're gonna see what's going on. No one's gonna know. So when they come here to this what machine, else? just always draws like a, a like a stupid bomb. You know, one of those <laughs> old ones with like a like a wick. <laughs> You're busted. Yeah, or yeah. TNT, like yeah. the old cartoons or whatever. Well, I could I could also see that it, you would probably be trained to, you know, mislead right. the machine. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or yeah. get people to think about something that you want them to think yeah. about. Right? Well, yeah, that does remind me of that. Of, uh, yeah. bicycle, you know, bicycle, bicycle, yeah. bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. You know, like, ah. Yeah, yeah. When they're trying to see if you're lying or not, right? So, like, the people have cheated that machine and been able to hack, you know, their their heart rate and everything else to, to make sure that, like, it, it didn't look like there was any yeah. blips. You, so you imagine a commercial version of this? They're lying. You're in an argument with your wife, you know what I mean? She's like, were you a... Uh, were you looking at that girl at the whatever? No. It's all drawn like two boobs. Here, hold on. Let me pull up the no! app. Let me pull up the app that I just got. Let's see real quick. <laughs> oh, my God. That's all you've been thinking about, you son of a... You know what I'm saying? This is very problematic, Sal. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not excited about this Okay, direction. so more, more scary technology news. Okay. I, I, was on a, I was on a scary technology news hit the other day. I like it. So I like you guys it. ready for this? Here's the title of this one. Um, and I'm going to close this out here. Stupid thing. An autonomous weaponized drone hunted down humans without command for the first time. What? So for the first time ever, we had a drone that was uh, that was uh, autonomous hunt down people that we wanted to, and it killed it themselves. Oh my God. This is a UN report that revealed this. So it was an artificially intelligent, you know, drone. So nobody was manning this drone. This drone was basically given information to right? go find this individual and did a lethal uh were they, and it was successful? they shoot him with something was it successful or it was successful temp- it was so wow. the first time an attack by artificial intelligence has taken place and this was in libya in march uh, 2020 so that's kind of crazy so we've just unleashed skynet yeah okay, <laughs> no. so what else have we done wow oh my god dude i know what's going on? <laughs> we're that's just cr- messing with everything I dude, know, that right? that's crazy it's too much i know right you imagine that just bzzz. It's flying uh, around. It's like, I'll kill this guy over here. Well, I mean, in terms of all this crazy information, I was watching uh, this this the latest documentary. It was on Son of Sam. And um, it, it, you guys know that Son of Sam, you know, in terms of like being one of the, the most uh, crazy like serial killer. Yes. Uh, you know, back in, I don't know, it was the 60s, 70s. Um, but it was it caused hysteria, mass hysteria in New York, and, and everybody was scared. It was like targeting um, uh, women, uh, uh, 
brown hair, I think, believe, but like he would just go and like shoot them in their car. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everybody was scared. Well, uh, this documentary was going over a lot more evidence that the, the police didn't even um, dig through or even do their homework with, uh, that there was more people involved. Uh, so not was, just him? Not just him. And it's it's very compelling evidence that shows it was part of this like satanic cult, oh, wow. which is my wheelhouse. I was like, oh my God, another cult like that was unknown. You're so into this weird shit. You right? are, dude. Do you sleep after this? Well, did, it was hard to sleep after this. Now, but, back in their defense, back then, though, like they didn't even, like serial killer wasn't even termed. Was it yet? Was it even a thing yet? Oh, it, yeah. That was it, all, it that all came out like at once. Yeah, so, around that same time, right? And, and it, this is where it gets really so they Crazy with the MK Ultra stuff, where they messed with all these people with uh, LSD, and they did all these like crazy brainwashing uh, experiments and things. Mm. Uh, it, it unleashed all kinds of crazy, it, and they can actually now trace uh, a lot of these people involved. Which um, basically, they killed themselves when they started investigating all these other leads what? Uh, later, and so it makes you even more like, why did why would they kill themselves if they're now looking into them? Well, so here, so here's a, I guess, a more mainstream explanation. Not saying that that's not what happened, but here's a more mainstream one. And you see this, uh, especially as media has gotten bigger and bigger, is that because for a long time serial killers weren't really a thing, and then all of a sudden you got a serial killer. They get lots of media Copycats. attention. It's not just copycats, but people who are on the edge, they see these media reports and it, 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 it pushes them in this particular direction. For example, mass shootings. Mass shootings are the same thing. A mass shooting will happen, and well, then all of a sudden you'll see another one and another you know, one. Well, have, the, the thing is, it's it's there's an arrogance element there too. With like, we got them. Like, we got them. The case closed. Like, you know, it's 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 so much hysteria that they wanted. Like, this is the answer. It was this guy. End of story. Even though a lot of the, even the victims' families are like, there's the evidence doesn't look like it could have been just one person being in in mm. like two different places at the same time. Well, you know, there's a country I don't know where, but they they actually passed a law that made it illegal to post a serial killer or mass shooter's name, so they wouldn't get media attention. Yeah, and the the goal was to prevent further, uh, you know, other people from doing the same thing and it seems to have worked i can't remember what yeah it no was. there's a i remember i shared that. a long time ago on the pod you guys know that that's like a, with bank robbers right they, they, mm, yeah. the bank robberies that happen they happen all the time and i believe the success rate is like 50 50 yeah so the success rate is so high that they don't want to promote that they don't want people to know really? it's that good huh? yeah i think yeah, it's, a lot I think of people it's, get away with it that's yeah. what it was before this has been a long time since I've, I've read anything around this but i thought that was a really interesting stat that they actually have a higher success rate and they don't share they don't share they only share people getting caught yeah so they don't so they don't promote this like it's it can get done that easy so it's a yeah, cuz i would think 95% of the time you get caught yeah you would think that but i don't think that's the case don't they all. always have the money that explodes blue or whatever I know. is that just the movies yeah i think it's uh, just the, the movies the ink yeah yeah, yeah. Right. like you take yeah. it home <laughs> like not when you not when you rob the teller right the teller right there has just got whatever's in her you know her drawer right there so it's not like she's got uh, paintballs inside. That is, uh, that's <laughs> wild. Oh, give them the one with the ink. You yeah. know, it's like yeah, they should have that. Yeah. Like, handy. you know, your to your point though about uh, like the it promotes it or the copycats or whatever. You know, it, it, we're seeing something similar in the NBA right now. With uh, there's this stupid thing that's happening right now with these fans. Fans are coming back in the stands and they're causing shit. Yeah, you know, like you had somebody dump popcorn on Kyrie Irving when he was thrown out. Another fan spit on another player behind oh, wow. the bench. This is all happening this last like couple weeks. Another fan ran out on the court and right in the middle of the game. Is it just because they're there and like now we can interact with everybody? Yeah, I mean they're they're getting attention, right? That's so they're, why. They're, yeah, they're yeah. playing them on ESPN that's and they're why. talking all about them and player and they're making a big deal about it and stuff. So yep. I, that's part of why I think it's happening that's more annoying. often now. Then I also think there's a little bit of this like pent up energy because you locked everybody down for so long and now they're out and about and just going to cause a ruckus yeah, now. Yeah, being idiots. A yeah. ruckus. Yeah. Yeah. ruckus. That was in uh, Breakfast Club. I heard yeah. a ruckus. I heard a ruckus out yeah. here, yeah. I, uh, I think they should handle shit like that the way that Vegas casino handles uh, casinos handle cheaters. <laughs> you don't see yeah. the cheaters. You don't hear about it or nothing yeah. like that. All of a sudden, they're just missing a hand. Yeah, and, yeah. and exactly. Yeah. And they make sure you ain't coming Well, that's back. what happens when uh, half of the businesses are owned by like mobsters. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little sure, bit of gangster I'm stuff sure if the on. NBA was uh, half owned by mobsters, you'd see that. What's uh, soccer? There was a documentary on that. Like, uh, who? There was a bunch of... Doug, you know this? 
this? You are you? Do you know anything about this? Talking like, about like the hooligans? No, no. There was uh, there was a there was several soccer teams or league that was owned by big drug lords. That was a oh, there was a oh, cool wow. there was a cool I think thirty for thirty documentary on it. Um, well, like, I know in in I mean all over the world, saw in some countries soccer is so worshipped. There was a player that accidentally yeah. made a goal in their own net. Lost the game. Got when they yeah. got home, killed. Well, that, this is during yeah. the same era. So that story, I believe, was in this documentary that I watched. I cannot think of the the famous drug dealer who uh, slipped in my. You got to find it, Doug. Columbia. I, well, yeah, I think it was. I would have never maybe guessed. Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, well, Pablo was one of them. So there was several of them that actually owned teams, and of course they're gambling and betting on it. So you like make them throw games and. Uh, Colombia yeah. must be a very energetic country. They have coffee <laughs> and cocaine. You know, I was like two very productive, two yeah, strong right. stimulants <laughs> coming out of, out of Colombia. Just people running yeah. everywhere. Yeah. We ah! have coffee and cocaine. That's that's that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we do. You know, speaking Just of give them a bunch of treadmills. Speaking of the serial killers, mm. uh, did you know that they deciphered the law? You know the Zodiac Killer. You know that is right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he's a big deal in San Francisco, I think. Yeah. And he had put and he would put out these long notes to the press yeah, and the police did. in code. They recently deciphered. There were some mathematicians who finally cracked the code. Have you seen this? No. And you can, I don't know if you could pull it up, Doug. No, because the yeah, son Zodiac's of Sam, back to that too, like the, he had a lo all these people like listed in his his letters that he he had, and, and they didn't even like go through and try and find these people. I thought they already cracked that, Sal, didn't they? But, didn't yeah. they didn't this, the, wasn't, this wasn't, it was relatively recently. There were like these mathematicians yeah. that finally cracked the code. Because the documentary I could have sworn went, went into that. Like Maybe it, maybe it, it was okay, like five, within the last five years. Oh, okay, yeah. The yeah, documentary is yeah. About five years old, I think. Okay. It's about when it. You've seen? Have you guys seen it? It's a really good. I, I did. It. Yeah, I did see it, but I don't really remember. Yeah, they how. did. So I don't know if you could. Re if there's parts of it you could read, but fifty-one it's, years it's, after, it's really creepy. The shit that this guy wrote. This was published in December of last year. Yeah, so oh, it's wow. about a year old. What does so it say? Maybe, oh, that, now I'm really interested because that the documentary was yeah. well before that. So there's stuff that they found out more later. It was like these notes that he would write that nobody could decipher for code crackers. Yeah, they talked about it. He used to he used mm -hmm. to write the chronicle. Like he would send them like a, a letter, yeah. basically telling him what he's gonna do in code, and they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to decipher it in time before he murdered somebody. Yeah. See, this is why this is part of the reason why these that you see more of these people is they get that attention. Yeah. You know, and it, it like pushes them in that direction. Yeah. It's like if they yeah, it's, it's, like, massive it's a game to them now. Well, yeah. yeah it's like yeah. why would you make do kill all these people if you're not if no one's going to find out type of deal. Especially mass shooters. A lot of it's like yeah. But then there's the other side of that. Like the best way to probably also find them is to let lots of people know because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of success in that. Also, there, there's right? a bit of that. Yeah. Because then yeah, the more people that are looking at the same time, they can kind of see trends and habits of right. you know, behaviors of people around them. Like oh, this guy double edged sword. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Right. Well, I guess we can't find what it, what it says. So, but anyway, uh, they did. They did crack it, and they were private citizens. These wow. were like regular yeah, people. Look into that. That you know that were able to. Ah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. That makes me want to read into that because the documentary I thought did a great job of going through everything. I thought they had figured everything out by then. So if this was only a year old, that was well after that documentary. So send that, Doug. Will you send that over to the group thread so I can read it? I'm curious to read. Yeah. What exactly Sal's talking yeah. about? It appears oh. like there are 30, uh, 340 ciphers as they call them, oh, like wow. symbols. Mm. And it was an Australian mathematician, Sam Blake, that figured it out. Wow. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Good for him. Yeah. So you're mentioning the other day about uh, like a like a dad fail. Uh, uh, yeah. So I'm like I'm like <laughs> wrestling with something right now. I'm like wondering, you know, did I right make the right move? Did I not? Uh, so when I was growing up, like it when you went from elementary school to junior high, I mean that was kind of a big deal, but there was no ceremony. You know, there was no like commencement or yeah. like you know graduation or whatever. Uh, and, and even then, it was like I, I'm going from sixth grade to seventh grade, and then it was our junior high was seventh and eighth. But now it's like they they do this whole like uh, ceremony and graduation for fifth grade going into sixth grade. And so like Ethan's doing that today, and I'm like, and I opted, you know, obviously to work. And so <laughs> he's doing that, and my whole family's there, and like all this stuff. He's wearing a bow tie today, and I'm like, oh no, maybe I didn't make. The right decision. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I think you might have. I don't think he'll, be, bro. I don't think he'll. Be, I mean, I, Sal and I would probably disagree on this one, right? He's more a family guy on the other yeah. on the other side of the. Because Katrina and I were literally just talking about something similar. Because her family, 
celebrates everything. Kid goes from kindergarten to first yeah. grade, we're celebrating. Kid goes from fifth to sixth, we're celebrating. Someone graduates eighth grade, we're definitely celebrating. Someone gets a job promotion, we're all celebrating. Any excuse to get the whole family well, together and celebrate. Well, here's the different. The, the, here's the challenge. The challenge isn't that it's a big deal or not a big deal. The challenge is, is that everybody's there but you. So yeah. what he'll remember, what he may remember my is, dad missed out. why is everybody here but not my dad? So here's the trick. Here's mm. what you gotta do. This You're fine. Good. He sees okay. you as a YouTube star. You're fine. No, no, no. Uh, Here's what you do. Listen. <laughs> This, that that, for hey, me. that trumps yeah. that, bro. No, no. All day. Trust me. Trust me with this. I fucked up real bad a couple times with my kids in this scene. And my kids now remember this part, not that part. Okay. When you show up today, you got to have something cool for them, like a cool gift. That's that's a good call. Be like, hey, I had to work today, but also the reason why I wasn't there is because I got you this fucking awesome yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going be like, my dad's the best dad ever. And you ever. deliver just like that. <laughs> Did anybody else buy you something cool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, trust me. Like, buy his your love. robot. <laughs> Dad tip of the day: buy his love. Hey, bye, bye. No, I mean you got, obviously it doesn't work all the <laughs> yeah. time. But you yeah. guys know the time I missed that, the father daughter. Yeah, you did the daughter. Disneyland thing. I took right? her to Disneyland, so she'll never forget that. She you talks about that all the time. Well, I mean, wow. I'm, I'm just like weighing these things out, just like you know the the whole trophy thing. You know, it's like like you're just graduating from fifth to sixth grade. They're like, like you got to keep going. You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. like eighth grade. Okay, I'll give you that milestone. Like high school, that's a big thing. Like yeah. I'm like, this is just fifth to. Sixth grade, I'm like, I love you, dude, but you got to keep going. Yeah, you know, like, that's <laughs> what is the theory on that? Do you guys know? Like, because obviously, um, going from eighth grade to high school, like you're you're supposed to do that. So, yeah. we why do we celebrate that? Why is it like a? I, uh, I think people just like to celebrate. They, they there's got to be reason. some no. There's got to be some sort of history, right? There's got to be some sort of history of like who decided all of a sudden one day that we're like, you know what? We should make this big ordeal about kids. I bet you there's like. Maybe way back when mm. uh, there was a good portion of the population that opted out of school after that age. Maybe that's what it was. And then if you continued on, it was a big celebration. Like, good for you. You're going to further your education. There's got to well, be good for you making this. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I definitely think that the kids are a little intimidated because it's like you know, now you're stepping into the big leagues. You know, like high school was yeah. a bit of a yeah. But isn't uh, it that jump. way because we make it that way, right? It's 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 a big leap because if it yeah. was all in the same. School where there was you had it wouldn't be a big deal. It'd just be the next. That's grade, true. Yeah, right? no, but it's I, a separate school. I, okay, so. uh, obviously it's like it's like the kids that get trophies for just participating. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't right. celebrate the trophy, but I would celebrate the games, right? So I wouldn't tell my kid, yeah. "Wow, you got a trophy!" Boo, that's, I wouldn't do that because it's like, well, you didn't win anything. Participation trophies. I have a fun fact for you. You just brought that up. I was sure. listening to this great interview. By the way, Patrick Bet David has become one of my favorite people to listen to interview other people. And he was interviewing. What's the comedian's name, Doug? I, I just can't. I don't know why it always slips from his name. Uh, what's the comedian's yeah, name? Name like? a comedian. No, no, no. I was just telling Doug <laughs> yeah, this yeah, story. Just Uber. Let me, no, let me no. See if you, can... you can't think of it either. I, can't I can't think just that. asked you. No, no, no. The most famous comedian, oh, Kevin yeah, Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. Thank you, Sorry, Kevin yeah. Hart. Come on, Doug. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you stupid Doug. I, I had to pull a comedian well, out of this guy. I asked it to him right before we walked into the studio. I thought that was pretty good. Hey, I knew it back then. Yeah. Anyways, so. One of the questions he asked him is, when did you know that you you were funny? Like, when did you know that you you had this talent or gift? He tells a story that in, I think it was eighth grade, he got a participation award. And he went up to give his speech, and there was like 70 people in there. And he basically ripped himself and made it, made fun of himself for being like an underachiever. Oh, wow. And the whole place was like roaring, yeah. just thought it was so hilarious. And he says, it was at that moment I realized that I, I had this, you know, talent to do that and everybody was coming up to him afterwards wow. and, his, and his mom and saying like oh your son's so funny and witty and smart and everything so but he got a participation trophy <laughs> and that and he went up there and instead of like you know making a big deal about oh look i got it it was more like making fun of himself That's, for being yeah, an underachiever the one case where it actually worked out yeah, yeah right there. <laughs> well speaking of these participation trophy kids i swear that generation is producing these uh, these super sensitive like instagram reporters that i keep yeah. getting <laughs> instagram reporters what well, uh, you know what we've done Done. Here's what we've done with social media. Yeah, we've that's given, a job now. We've given individuals too much power. Well, you know what Doug would say yeah. to that right now, right? He would point out your point you just made 10 minutes ago, which is you talking about it and bringing it up only causes more attention because somebody got your attention by doing that. Is that right, Doug? Would you I know? agree wholeheartedly Maybe. with that. Well, wow. <laughs> Maybe I want more attention. What you focus on expands, they say. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just bought a Volkswagen. I see them everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> They're expanding. Hey, you know it I mean? still annoys the shit out of me. I know, on, I know. It's too much power to individual people. Hey, whatever happened back in the day, you don't like something, just turn around. Well, also, you know, okay, so... Or 
if you're offended and you tell, you have to tell them to their no. face. Well, okay. So where do you, where, okay, where do you stand on this? Because there's you, thought police now. We yeah, talked you can't about even think that way. I, I don't care. This is kind of a neat conversation because it, it, something interesting happened to one of our good friends, Lane Norton, just recently, right? So Lane, yeah, was, he got targeted by people. He right? got targeted, and and so and I love Lane. I hate to see that happen to one of our friends or whatever like that. Um, but there's also another side to this, okay? And I and I will tell Lane this. I've told him that openly. Um, he brings on a lot of this attention because his whole business model is this whole, you know, he goes like a tax people. style. He goes after everybody. Yeah, his, yeah. And his his mission, he believes, is to go call out all the bullshit. And he does it in a very aggressive way. And um, it makes it very entertaining. It's grown his business substantially. Mm -hmm. oh, and so people love that. Stuff. Yeah. So he's doubled and tripled down on that and more power to him if that's the model he wants. But that also attracts a lot of people that are in are going to hate on you. And no, and they say that, like, I, I don't like this idea too of like, uh, you know, no matter how big you get, like it's, if you're doing the right things, you're going to have haters like this. Mm. I, I pride ourselves on the fact that we actually have built something this big and we don't get a lot of hate. We no, get, we don't. A, a, every now and then we do, but we don't get a ton of it. Yeah. But I also feel like we don't attract Except that. Except that meal company that emailed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I've seen every once in a while, yeah. Yeah. every yeah. once yeah. in a while, maybe yeah. a little bit, right? But, <laughs> But, you know, okay, so so what ends up happening, this is my theory, right? And it's a, I don't know if this is exactly what happened, but in, the way the algorithm works with, like, YouTube and with Instagram is they can't, like, it's not one person that comments and says, oh, or else there would be one hater who, who could shut down all these businesses. It doesn't work that way. It's when the algorithm gets a flood of, like, the same complaint or at the same time from all different directions. So, and now we have this era where kids get together on Reddit and they move a stock. I mean, that's the, the power of it, right? And there's right. people on each side of this. There's got people that are traders. Yeah, there's that, power in these groups. That's right. And and if you can get enough people that agree with you, yes, Lane's an asshole, but, and bond, band together and say, let's all tomorrow go put a, a, a block on him and say this is offensive and then it hacks the algorithm because it's all, it's not like there's a person sitting behind there goes like, oh yeah, what Sal said is definitely offensive. Sure. We're blocking but, that. But uh, I think there's more to it. I think if you've had previous complaints, then then they make it more sensitive. I do think, and there's plenty of evidence of this, that people that work at these companies will target particular people mm -hmm. because they don't agree with their views. Okay, so, so I, people well, at Facebook or Instagram will look at. Let me put it. Yeah, this but you way. can't think that that's you or Lane. No, right no, 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 no. Okay. It doesn't. That's not the point. We're talking about the bigger picture here. You're right, but that's the big. I'm talking about the. For example, you have people that were kicked off social media permanently, and then you have like the Ayatollah of Iran who talks about killing Jews all the time has a Twitter account. Yeah. Oh, the algorithm, my ass. There's literally someone there who's like, this is okay and this isn't. Yeah. And that's fine. That's your company. I mean, I, I don't know. Is there really, though? It, it's hypocritical. No, I, it is. It's clear, bro. It is clear. It's not clear, that clear. I don't think it's that clear. I, I think, think it's very I, clear. I think that they, it's an, in, there's an algorithm that they put in place, which, by the way, how do you police a billion people? Okay. Mm. If you have a billion people viewing your stuff in and out. I mean, think about that for a second, okay? The, how hard that would be. Sure. Mind Pump grows to be as massive as YouTube does, and we've got a billion eyeballs on us every single day. There's no... You couldn't even build a team of people to monitor everything, so you have to write a code and an algorithm, are, and then I, how how do you decide what that algorithem yeah, looks like? I, I heard a good conversation about this, and, and one thing that they brought up, which I totally think uh, I agree with, I, I, I think there's... A, there's we got to get rid of the autonomy. We got to get rid of the 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 people that uh, you know. You can't like pinpoint like this individual as being the person that's like they can just hide behind like an autonomous uh, uh, profile, and, and it could be from anywhere. It could be from Russia. Anonymous. It could be from China. Oh, not yeah. Yes. I said autonomous. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anonymous. Talking about the autonomous drone. That's it's why. autonomous. Yeah, um, but yeah, no. Like so, for me personally, like it it needs to come back to person to person interaction and have communication. Like if you're really staunch about your stance. Uh, we need to know that you're a real human being first and foremost, and not a robot. Mm -hmm. You're giving okay. That's fair. The, that's, a good, and, that's a good argument. And a lot of these are a lot of these algorithms give too much power to individual people. So in the past, if you had a company where 95 percent of everybody, Dude, you're such a free market loved, guy, though. You're right, absolutely. I'm, and I'm telling you right now that this part of the market is going to get corrected because I'm not the only one that's seeing this. No, I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's going to get corrected because there's too much power going to it's individual an, crybabies. Okay, it's a, it's an it's an improving True. it's an improving algorithm. Okay, it's not like it's this is the rule and this is what we be. This is the direction they started, and then this is now. 
here's the consequences of that algorithm. What what could potentially happen? You could get 500 anonymous bots that one person maybe has built or controlling to go target a person. Right. So I can get behind. I can get now. Okay, that, that's literally happened. So that's that's been a part of right. Yep. Okay, so what we've seen in elections. So now, as as the owner of YouTube, and okay, now I got to figure out how do we. How do we combat that, right? So how do we write an algorithm now that that fixes that? But you got to start somewhere. You got to, or, or else, are you just gonna? Are you not? Yeah, yeah. Or, I, I, I agree. I think you're right. I also, but what I'm trying to say is, it's it's it has to change. You give too much power to individuals. It will though. It, it will. It has to. Right. But it, it has to. I mean, it does. It always does. We'll it, see. It, it evolves. But right? there's another port. To, there's another part to this, which is very clear. It is not consistent. There are people who get banned and kicked off and deleted and then there are other people who are far more well okay inflammatory, that's, that's dangerous that's your theory my theory it's not well okay, no it's not a theory it's been proven well okay no it's not been proven actually it has no it has not show me the proof on that because what? what you don't know is what could this could potentially happen okay let's use lane's example someone lane can make the case that he's targeted in the fitness space out of everybody because of this is happening to him i would argue back to him it's like you've pissed off more people who've ba banned together and gone and reported you so are you because of your let's say he has political views and he can try and, and there's a correlation there that look at everybody who has these political views get targeted maybe, so, yeah. yeah. maybe you're an asshole yeah maybe inflammatory maybe maybe you're more of an asshole so, than this person so you, who has who has a, a different ideology than you do and you're less like mm. therefore they they can't help the, hack the algorithm because there's only five people that don't like you right not or, 500 or if you watch the undercover videos with executives from these social media companies who mm -hmm. are specifically saying we are targeting these per these per people. We're targeting this person in particular, this yeah. per, uh, po political uh, individual, and we are specifically trying to get them kicked off. So which you, those videos exist. They're so out there. fair. Okay. So there, there's, yeah. there's. Remember, I, remember, these are people. isolated incidents no, where there's. No, it's the, not. These are these. Remember, these are people running these companies. People are not robots. In other words, they have their opinions, yeah. and if their opinions lean one way or they don't want, they'll do that, and it's not fair. And because it's so big, here's a deal. Here's here's my my rub. Okay? Well, then also you got to go. Here's another thing too. It's a private company. You're right. And now here's my rub. You're right. hundred well, percent. Here's my rub with that. They're going to fuck themselves. If they keep doing this. What, what do you think about this legislation in Florida? Like trying to check that's it. That's an example. It's a, it, what happens when you're what, a company. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. Tell me what that is. So the mayor, uh, no, the governor, yeah, a governor. Okay. Santos. Yeah. What? So, the, well, you'd explain it. Salah. you probably know it better than me, but it basically he's, he, he basically put it out that like you could you could have a lawsuit for being deplatformed, uh, you know, if you're targeted on one of these social media uh, uh, companies. No, what it said was if you're a, a social media company and you remove a political person who's been elected to office, you will be fined every single day for doing that in Florida. So if there's a president or a governor or a senator, and Twitter blo just deletes you. The law says if they're elected officials, you can't do that. Otherwise, you'll get fined. Okay, it's just elected day. officials. Now, so now how does now how does went across the regular? Okay, so know, now how does how does Florida have the power to? So you are you saying that in this situation, if if Twitter decided to deplatform uh, somebody right now, that who's it, a governor, who's or a governor, right, right of of Florida. Florida can then take action after Twitter? Absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it, I mean, you can and they'll fight it, but you definitely can't. But and then my point is this, uh, I'm a big, like again, I'm a big free market guy, but the problem is and here's the deal. This we'll talk about the supplement industry. Well, this for is example. what this is my problem with your argument is that you you go back and forth here because No, I'm not you, going you're back big, and you're forth. You're a big free market guy when it serves you and it doesn't serve you. I'm not actually so free not. Market guy. I'm not saying I like this. What I'm saying is this is a reaction to business owners being idiots. For example, Look at the supplement industry. It's a matter of time before it continues to get more regulated. Why? Because supplement companies continue to do stupid shit. They're inviting regulators to get popular opinion on their side and then pass these crazy laws. So it's like if you're a supplement company, like when they do these, these, these studies where they take, you know, 10 supplements and nine of them don't have what they say they have in them. Now the FDA has got a great case and the public will start to support it. Mm -hmm. So with social media companies in the past trying to regulate them, the public didn't support it. Now, a lot of people are like, actually that makes sense because you deplatform this person, yeah. but this person's well, over here. Well, you've seen this too with how they handled Parler. Like there was a competitive force out there to get people onto yeah. a platform that had didn't have a different bias 
granted it was an extreme other end bias, but you know, you saw what happened to them and, and how yeah. they got, uh, you know, like upended. They're, they're the, the, literally, the, they're literally asking. The for, problem is that people want that, right? That, that's my thought is that what we're going to see is there will be a, another, tw the Twitter's counter. There's going to be Facebook's counter. There's going to be the Instagram's counter. I think before that. And it's going to look just because it, it's, why would it be any different, right? Because we've seen this in, in traditional media and yeah. news. For the longest time, you can. I mean, there's a great, uh, there's a great, uh, uh, what you call, what do you call those, like uh, images, right? Where you, where they have the, you know, down the middle, to the left, far left, right, far right, and then like all the the news media. Oh right, 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 right. I forget what it's called. What it's called. Yeah, what's that? What's it's, that? It's like a, it's like a infographic. A right? Infographic. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's so. There's a great infographic that yeah. shows you that. I, I mean, we're going to have the same thing with a social media platforms since it's become the future of how everybody's I, consuming their media. I agree, but I also think because of the way that these social media companies have been operating, they have invited uh, tons of legislation. Before that happens, mark yeah. my word, the era of free social media is over, yeah. and they've done it themselves. They've they've influenced. They, they went way too far. They went way too far with the way they ban people and the way that they tend to take sides and whatever. And but they it, just invited. Yeah. They pissed off the left for a long time. Now they pissed off the right so now they're pissing everybody off now public opinion is starting to sway in the direction of regulation right. so what do you think is going to happen they're yeah. going to get regulated it's just been a lot more negative aspects that's what it's to under, it than yeah. good. Media, media media bias chart it's a really good chart yeah, to, we'll put for that people in the, so you uh, kind of know where I, and this is notes. this is really good i think for some what i try and do always because sometimes i don't remember where all of them fall if i read an article that gets me all fired up i'm like oh my god i can't yeah. believe this bullshit i'll go to this media bias chart and see which side it leans yeah, and yeah. then i'll mm -hmm. go read the same I'll try and find the, someone on the opposite the side. opposite side that wrote about about the same thing to yeah. kind of balance yeah. out. It requires a lot of work to, to be able to get get outside of I all know. the bias. It's I know. crazy. We're, well, that, that's, we're very easily influenced, and, and that's where I think it's going to go, though. Don't you? I just and okay. So who they they brought on all this legislation? Okay, I so do. What? However, old media was very free, was not regulated in the same way. Social media. It's not going to be free. I promise you. Regulation is coming down the pike and people are supporting it mm -hmm. because they've pissed everybody off. And it's their own fucking fault because of the way you guys do things. Mm -hmm. And it sucks. It sucks because it should be totally free. But in order to be totally free and not invite legislation, you have to operate with a way that exemplifies integrity. Well, at so, some the, point. so then the answer is, in your opinion, is to just uh, allow it all to be free, right? I would wish that it would be done that way. I would love for it to happen that way. It's not going to happen, though. They've done things so stupid that it's it's already happening. You're already seeing states and, you know, starting. And you, they, like I said, they piss it's, both sides it's off. It's so hard for me to kind of get behind that because I just, I try and put my, you know, put my feet in their shoes where if I built YouTube up. And, oh, sure. It's challenging, isn't it? Yeah, because you have your own personal morals and values yeah. as, an, as an owner of a company. And I don't give a fuck about your opinion or how things are going to get legislated or if they're now going to throw and it's going to be more difficult for me. It's my company and I don't want this crazy motherfucker putting videos on my platform, so I'm going to pull them down. I agree with you, but you know what would help that? So if I was that person who ran this social media company and I saw, man, we're going to get legislated and then we're going to get fucked, what I would do is I'd be open about it. Hey, here's the deal. I don't like him. I like these other people. You're right. I lean this direction or I lean that direction. So my social media company is just like that. I agree. I would just be out there. That, right? I mean, that would be the... The, the problem is they pretend not to. Yeah. They say that they're... No, we're totally... We're neutral. Yeah. yeah. You're not neutral. You're No, you're not. And so then that's you piss people off. And because you're so big, you have so much influence, like politicians, like they, they, they you know, they... You, you can tell they're just like, I can't wait to legislate over this. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on either now. I mean, when you say legislate, though, what do you think? Because I, I don't think it's going to get as controlled and as crazy as you think it is. I think what will end up happening is it'll open up competitors. I Well, here's what I think. I think you see more legislation like you saw in Florida. You're going to see more of that start to happen. I think you're going to see them not get protection. Like Which, by the way, do you, you like that or not like that? You're not a fan of what they passed in Florida. You know, I can see why they would pass a law like that, but I think, like, I who, think, who right, are you to know. pass a law on a private company? Yeah. That, well, yeah, and I'm not a fan of giving more control and power to the government. I, I'm almost that, never. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you get to decide what, what exactly. He, that yeah, he's, cynical me, like, likes that they gave him a slap in the face, though. 
<laughs> you yeah. know, because of of just running free with all this like re- like ridiculously obvious bias, and and it to me it just screams of that. So I I don't know. I again, it, it's a reaction. It's an extreme reaction to what I've seen. You know, them uh, not deal with internally. Well, yeah. To your point, I mean, what you don't give them a lot of options to how to combat it, right? Like, yeah. how how were they supposed to? They, they've muscled out any competition. They, that's right. So that's why I'm like, they, there needs to be another thing implemented in here to kind of create. Some more balance and yeah. so that's what i picture happening is more and more of this legislation happening like you were saying throughout states till eventually somebody gets the gumption to go okay i think we can try and i they maybe not take down the monster of twitter but i think i can build something competitive enough yeah. because there's enough people yeah. that don't like how they do business i'm going to go the opposite direction favor the views that these people like and that's where we're going to see the the fox and the cnn of yeah. instagram and twitter I, and facebook i agree i think so but i do think it's just it's not going to be as easy anymore because they're going to regulate it and there's going to be lots of legislation and people are going to love the le- legislation because like justin said it makes you feel feel good for a second because like yeah that's what you yeah, get get them but, but then you don't realize it, like, oh shit now they have if it keeps going yeah it's going to go uh, bad for the consumer exactly so. it'll, it'll go bad and, and and i think that's gonna i think that's totally gonna happen and remember they're protected so twitter facebook instagram all these they're all protected like as if they were the phone company right like at&t here in california is our is our is the phone company that we use and if i call justin or someone else and we commit a crime or plan a crime at and is not responsible. There's laws that protect AT and T yeah, because yeah. they they're just host. They're just allowing us to talk, but they're not actively engaged. Yeah. Now, in a magazine with editors, if an editor allows an article to go in that puts slander on someone or that promotes something that's illegal, the magazine could be liable. And these social media companies are treated like phone companies. Yeah. But they're obviously but they're editing and, and yes. yeah, making sure like certain people aren't on the platform. Right. So when they're doing that, it's like you're it's like, guys, how long do you think you're gonna get away with doing all this and not getting regulated? Like yeah. it's your just like the supplement companies, just like these idiots that only supplement companies that are putting shit in their pills that they're not supposed to, or lying or ripping people off. At some point it's gonna get regulated. We're all gonna get pissed off, but guess what? It's their fault. It's their own fault that they they brought this. Well, out. and I this has always been yeah. my because you know this is where you and I are a little bit different because I know I I do lean free market with with most ideas, but unfortunately there's a lot of evil and bad people. There's a lot of people that like you can say that all day long like you're bringing this on. It doesn't matter. There's there's going to be people that are going to break rules, sure. are going to do shady business, are just going to be are bad. They're just sure, sure. and without allowing some sort of higher power to come in and legislate rules and laws to play to try and even the playing field. Right. There's always going to be somebody trying to manipulate. That's the one problem that I have with completely letting things be free. Oh, I'm letting, not. I'm not an let, anarchist. I think there yeah, should be. That's why it's be, so nuanced. Yeah, I think there definitely should be laws. I'm not saying there shouldn't be. And, any, but any that. Laws. But that's also you know because you feel that way this is where this gray area becomes like well, where where do yeah. they step in because i'm not completely anti what has happened to like our friend lane or what even happened to you because okay it's not like it's one person has that power i'm almost positive the algorithm doesn't work i that think way. at some point though you do i think if you get uh, people and then they I, I i don't disagree with that okay you, i'm not you're, you're taking my point and taking yeah. it to another level you're are there certain people at the highest level and they've came out and they're targeting fucking big names like donald trump i'm not talking about that i'm talking about people like you yeah no I'm talking I, about people like lane Norton. what i me. think for me is because i'm probably already on a list <laughs> at instagram because it's already happened to me that it weighs more on me than sure. it would for someone. Yeah, else. because you've already been shadow banned. So you uh, just yes. like with tax, just like, like what happened to me at, just at like, Disneyland, my mess. Uh, just like what happens. With, <laughs> just what happened. Just like what happens with list. tax evasion, right? So there's the people cheat on their then, taxes. Then you're being all, watched all the time. But right. once you've been nailed, right? Or if you you know you're you're doing a lot of gray area They'll stuff, start tracking you. That's right. You get flagged, and so you've been flagged because you've been shadow banned for stuff. And then it, all it takes is X amount of more people, and then you and I both have very polarizing personalities. Yeah. You know, you either love us or you hate us. Mm-hmm. And so because of that and of our size, you have enough people that are like, you know what? I can get 10 of my friends to, that don't like Sal. We all hate Sal. Let's go yeah. do this. And yeah. so, but- How oh, dare them. I, I know. know. We, we love Say it to my face. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick, before we get to the rest of the podcast, look, all of us guys are interested in performance, both in the gym and outside of the gym. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that performance that's super, super important for you and your partner. Well, we just started working with a company called Blue Chew. Now, Blue Chew provides you with chewable tablets that contain the active ingredients, the same active ingredients that you'll find in Viagra and in Cialis. Uh, So it's legit. You take it, you chew on it, 
um, and then it's active in your system and it works. Now, Blue Chew is an online company. It's a very simple process. In fact, all you got to do is go to bluechew.com. You consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you get your prescription within days. Of course, the best part, it's all done online. You, got, you don't have to go to an office. You don't have to meet anybody and talk to anybody. It's sent right to your door. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually have a special deal. You can try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code Mind Pump at checkout. All you got to do is pay $5 of shipping. So go to bluechew.com. Don't forget to use the promo code Mind Pump and get your first month for free. And for those of you that need it, I think once you try it, you'll see just how great uh, their medications are. Uh, here is the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Deborah from Texas. Hey, Deborah, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, before I start, I want to say I'm super excited uh, to be talking to you. You're the closest things to celebrities that I follow. <laughs> um, and I, you have really, your content has changed my life in more than just the fitness aspect. I think I've uh, made a lot of mindset progress um, from following your podcast. So thanks for what you guys do. Um, okay, so I live in Central Texas, and I'm wondering how I might best uh, change my lifting programming just a little bit this summer um, to get through some of the extreme heat and humidity. Um, to give a little background, I started, I got back into lifting about um, 18 months ago or a little bit less. Uh, I worked out primarily from home, but as I've gotten a little bit more towards the intermediate level of lifts, I joined a gym. It's kind of an old school bodybuilding gym. It has an indoor air conditioned area, but it's usually pretty packed and there's a lot of machines in there. I prefer to use um, barbells and dumbbells and kettlebells when I can. So I use the outdoor functional space most of the time. And that's great um, for nine months out of the year, but these summer months, it's already starting to get very hot out there. And I'm just wondering I feel myself a lot of days getting really weak um, pretty early on in my lifts. So I'm wondering what I might be able to do to still maintain a good um, strength protocol while um, being safe. Okay. Well, I noticed in your notes that you said you're supplementing with Element uh, while you're doing your workouts. Is that correct? And then cordyceps. Yes. The Element salts uh, have helped quite a lot. And I've started taking um, cordyceps as well at your suggestion. And I have noticed a difference um, there too. I'm trying not to be a wimp about the heat. I mean, I know there's people that work in this heat all day, all summer long. So I know I can withstand it for a couple of days a week, but it's really a killer. My work schedule does not allow me to get into the gym um, anytime other than like 3.30 to 5 in the afternoon, which is the absolute worst time to do it. But it's when I have the opportunity. So I got to go with it. That's what I was going to ask. I was hoping that you had a way that you could work out earlier in the morning or later at night. Uh, maybe just, I mean, I, I have a, this, this is a really fun and interesting question. I don't think I had ever had a question just like this. Uh, but well, you, you have the least heat tolerance outside of all of this. You might <laughs> yeah. have some good suggestions. Well, over, right away, you know what comes to mind for me, what I would probably do, because you're right. I, I don't I don't like that at all. Uh this I might run up because obviously there's only there's going to be a short period of time. We're talking about a month or two months where it's going to be like like it's just intolerable, right? It's not like the whole year is like this. It's just you you probably are talking about right. a month or two, right? So I think I mean th this is actually where I am, and I don't know if you have this flexibility to extend the workout to be longer, but. I would probably do these like really long rest periods. This would, you would find me being like, uh, you know, power lifter Adam at this time, you know, I would be doing the, the three minute breaks. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, I totally, I would yeah. be doing the three minute breaks, running a five by five type of a routine or like an anabolic phase one. Cause what I don't want to be doing is like a phase three of aesthetic or something or, or maps performance, you know, phase two or three, where you're just like, that yeah. would just crush Your me. Your heart's just racing. The whole time. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's like, cause you're already doing the stuff on supplements. I mean, and I see you drink a gallon of water. So you're drinking the water, you're doing the sodium intake, you're doing the cordyceps. So I think you're doing all the right things that way. Justin already hit the easy one, which is, you know, can we train at a colder time in the day? So if you're stuck in the middle of the heat, then, 
I guess what I would do, my programming would look like these long rest periods, you know, longer than what I normally would do. And it's, you're not going to get, it's not going to hurt your, your progress by doing that. Uh, so that's what I would, that's the first thing that comes to mind. What do you think, Sal? Yeah, I, I would say because there's a drawback to that too, because then you're exposed to the heat a little longer. I think people underestimate the amount of sodium uh, that they would need to to tolerate a lot of heat. Um, so you may be, I don't know how many packets of element you're drinking uh, during your workout, but I would do... Uh, yeah, right now I'm doing one full pack. Yeah, I would try one full pack before you work out. So, you know, maybe maybe a half hour to an hour before you work and out. One midway or half. And then one uh, one while you're working out because you want to get that in your system before you start the – otherwise you start to play kind of catch up. Um, and aside from that, you just you're just going to have to listen to your body while you train. So it might mean you don't lift as heavy. It might mean you're not doing as much volume, but that's totally fine. Yeah. The heat actually adds a little another element to the adaptation process, and we do tend to acclimate uh, to the workouts as we practice them. But it's nothing to worry about unless you're finding yourself getting dizzy, nauseous, or getting like these massive headaches. But yeah, don't underestimate the the sodium. I would go a packet before. I mean, I'll tell you what, like I don't eat processed foods, so my sodium intake is normally low. I'm not working out in the heat. You're uh, doing like two or three packets. But I'll do I'll do a packet before I work out and a packet during. If I was out in the sun, it might even be a, a little bit more. So I would try a packet before and then a packet during and, you know, and then listen to your body and, and see mm -hmm. how you feel and modify the workouts accordingly. But it's not going to take away from uh, your results, if anything, because it's different. It might actually improve uh, some of the results that you get. Yeah, I'm hoping. Um, I actually just recently moved into a a carnivore style um, way of eating just to um, try to break a, a really bad sugar addiction that I have. And so I'm hoping the extra sweat will help me get rid of some of those toxins as well. So I'm trying to look at it as a positive situation. It really it's kind of sucked already a couple of days this year. Um, but I, I have been leaning towards what Adam said to to kind of go with a a five by five or or less with the longer rest periods yeah. because it really does take a lot out of you pretty quick. Yeah. I have mad respect for like the guys that go to Afghanistan and, and mm -hmm. work out <laughs> while they're there. It's that's crazy. Um so yeah, so this is super helpful. Um awesome. Thanks so much guys. Well one one more thing real quick before you hang up, uh Deborah. Now that I know you're also yeah. going carnivore. Even more reason to do more yeah. element. Yeah, right. your body's getting rid of sodium. Uh, like crazy. Yeah. So unless you so, have unless you have high blood pressure or your doctors advised you to watch your sodium, um, I would go a packet before, a packet during, and throughout the day probably drink a couple more and then see yeah. how you feel. I, I've been doing even on non workout days. I drink usually a pack to a pack and a half. Um, plus, I've been salting my food pretty heavily, so I do try to stay on top of that um, the salt for sure. Yeah, but you would be surprised again, you know, just because you're salting your food and especially because you work out. You well, would... especially now she's eliminating carbs too, because that changes that, right? So oh, you yeah. eliminate carbs, and if you're eating whole foods, you're eating clean, then, um, like Sal said, I think you could easily yeah. get away with two or three packets every day. I mean, I, I salt my food too. I don't eat processed food, but I salt the hell out of my food, and I have probably, and I'm, I'm very low carb. He right really, now. so he carries salt in his purse. And I have goes. three, yes. I have yeah. three, three to four packets of element a day, usually around three. Just so you, just just to give you some uh, some context. Okay. okay, awesome. Okay, that's that's awesome. Thanks so much, guys. No problem. Mm -hmm. God, I would I would I would hate to work out. Oh, in that. I'm such a baby. It's the worst. I was gonna bring <laughs> up, dude. Like uh, when I when, when I went to the Midwest and, and uh, had to deal with the heat and the humidity was really what like got me because it was basically like you're walking in this sauna and you're, and you're trying to do your regular workouts but it just drains the hell out of you i actually started to put really cold towels in between sets on my neck and just to try and like get my mm. body temperature down a little bit to then go back and have something but i was always just zapped. I, I love extreme weather workouts really cold really hot i don't know it adds an element of like really puts me in the in the zone when i'm doing it but yeah. you cannot i mean i tell you right now it toughens you up. And it, it just, it's different. Like when it's really hot, I'll get better pumps. Obviously, the sweat feels good. Uh, when it's really cold, I just feel mm. like I'm more aggro into the workout. But 
the sodium thing's a big one, man. It's, it's like, huge. And it's different from person to person. So, of course, if, you, if you're advised to reduce your sodium, then you don't want to do this. But it makes a huge difference with people. I had runners that I would train that would only lift weights with me or train with me once a week, but they trained so often with running. And, and I would have them add uh, Himalayan salt to their water. Mm -hmm. And they noticed a uh, tremendous improvement in there. And we've been just sold for so long that sodium so bad yeah. that it feels bad to add more, you know? But again, if you're healthy and you're not eating a lot of processed food, uh, go ahead and experiment and see how you feel with, with more of it. Our next caller is Ryan from Alberta, Canada. Hey, what's up, Ryan? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going today? Good. Good. All right. All right, so uh, back in late December, I started listening to the podcast, got hooked right away, and bought the New Year's bundle. Uh, I've run Anabolic, and currently I'm about three-quarters of the way through performance. Obviously, I was going to go into aesthetic next, but realized that this runs into the time of year where I'm going to begin to spend a lot of time away from home. So June through August, I'll be gone about 50% of the time camping with my family, and then uh, September through November, I'll do a lot of time hunting with friends. So June through August, yeah, I'll do a lot of hiking with the kids, uh, break resistance bands with me, I'll do trigger work. And when I'm gone hunting September through November, usually hike about 10 to 20 miles a day. Um, I won't do any extra work during that time as, you know, we're usually up before sunrise, leave before sunrise and then get back after sunset. So my question is, should I run aesthetic anyways and just make my way through the program a little slower or should I run something else? I had thought about rerunning through the phases of anabolic and performance that align with my goals, which is primarily strength and aesthetics, but I was curious to hear your opinions. Also in the next little bit here, I'm going to add a few days a week, one to two of uh, trail running and hill climb in order to prep for hunting season. Mm, okay. That's a good question. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff. Um, when you're gone, you're gonna be very active. Mm. Now, I would say you can do aesthetic when you're home, and when you're not home, you do some body weight exercises, and MAPS Anywhere has got some really good workouts in there, so we can send that to you if you don't have it. But here's another thing I want to add. Uh, don't overdo it, uh, You know, especially when you're doing so much activity. I know we can in our heads we can think, okay, I need to get in my weights as well, but it's very easy when you're doing that much activity to add resistance training, and then it be too much, and then what ends up happening is you – not only do you get zero uh, results from it or zero benefit, you actually kind of start to go backwards a little bit. So I would definitely listen to your body. If you feel like you've got the strength and energy and it feels good to do some resistance training, if you're not near equipment, MAPS Anywhere has got the best. They're the best workouts you'll find anywhere that don't require uh, any equipment except for resistance bands. Uh, this is a fun question because I I don't think there's a, a, a right or a wrong answer here. I, I I do agree with Sal that I would I caution you not to overdo it. Uh, I mean, I'll have an, I'll give you another option that you could do um, is not run aesthetic at all and actually run a map suspension. And with map suspension, you can take that on the go with you. So you can run it while you're at home, which is a fun program. It's different, uh, and all you need is a suspension trainer. You can strap that around a tree. Uh, when you're on the road or somewhere else and follow that program. And then when you get back from your, your stint where you're gone hunting and stuff and you're back, then you can resume uh, the bundle and go back to MAPS Aesthetic. So that's also an option. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. And then also keep in mind, um, you know, we, I know recently on the, the podcast, we shared that study that I think Lane Norton posted about about a month ago uh, where it talked about, you know, three weeks on and one week's off. And they compared those to the two groups of people, right, that – train every single day for like three months consistently. And then the other group that took a week off every third week and the results were the same. So, you know, and you're going to be an act, you're, do, you're being active while you're out. So it's not like you're sedentary and eating garbage food and stuff like that. So I also wouldn't worry about sometimes having a week off of training and just focusing on what you probably love to do, which is hunting and hill climbing and doing those things. So I think it, it would, it still benefits you, you know, psychologically it gets in our head sometimes when our goal is to, get shredded or look a certain way and you're not training for a whole week, but ultimately in the long term, it'll, it'll probably benefit your body sometimes to take it off. Yeah. And I think too, like it's, it's healthy to call audible. So if you know that you've been um, hitting certain parts of your body quite a bit, like obviously it's going to look totally different. Your structuring of, of activity and movement is going to look completely different than what you've been doing. So uh, to, to sort of just know to weave in, like say you haven't been expressing your upper body like you have been before, like I would, you know, try to incorporate that somehow with body weight training, like Adam saying, like with a suspension trainer or, uh, you know, doing some kind of maps anywhere type programming. But um, you're going to be able to bounce back once you get to the weights 
again. So it's not like, you know, this this dire need to, to make sure like everything's dialed in. Uh, it's OK to step out, but but still try to you know express those those movements and keep those muscles stimulated. Yeah, I think that kind of thought was, is that is it even worth running aesthetic right away as if I'm going to be doing so many things that almost seem counterintuitive to it to me or counterintuitive to me, Right. you know, as opposed to say like doing that bodybuilding training, I'm going to be doing a lot more, uh, a lot more cardio style stuff. And is that just going to run against kind of what that programming should look like on aesthetic? Yeah, good. And you know what? Because we brought up two programs. I don't think you own. We'll just send them both to you. So you'll get yeah. suspension and. Anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, and look, if you, if you're, if you hunt successful and you want to send us some elk meat or something, <laughs> we'd be yeah. open to that. Elk jerky. Uh, that, that's, that's the goal this year, boys, is uh, in the mountains for elk, but it's like 10% success rate up here. So, so oh, wow. see, that's, no, that's fantastic. Thank you so much well, for that. I really good appreciate it. For you. Good right. luck, man. Good Justin's luck, got man. a great elk call. I do. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. yeah. That's great. Put Thanks, me on the guys. spot, dude. All the best. Take it easy, Ryan. That's not how we do it, Justin. We put you out in the in the forest <laughs> and have you walk around naked. Yeah. And the elk are like, oh, <laughs> that's more like that's it. another elk. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's more like it. coming back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you know, when I hear people say, <clears throat> that the, I mean, he's gonna go hunting like for two months or something like I know, that. I know, savage. Part of me is jealous. Like, how cool would that be? be? So awesome. Just go out and just be by yourself yeah, or with your nature boy. But yeah, and just do something like that sounds so awesome. But yeah, people, it's, I, I get it too. I, I get that whole the the feeling of. Oh crap! I'm gonna stop working out. What am I gonna do? But yeah. boy, muscle memory is such a big it deal. Is. It Thankfully. is. It comes back super fast. And and, it, and like I said, especially when you're you're uh, he's going to go do something that's you know physically active yes. and demanding. Like so, he's he's only gonna probably lean out, right? Mm -hmm. He's on the move all day long and stuff like that. So when and when you're thinking, if your goal is aesthetics and you want to look good. Uh, maybe not even working out for you know a week or two at a time, and but just doing all that activity yep. and making good food choices, he's gonna look good. And then the minute he gets right back to yep. the gym, when he gets back, he's gonna, his body's gonna respond. And or you have your suspension trainer out there with you, and so maybe you have a slower week of activity, and so maybe you you, you pull it out, wrap it around the tree, work out for thirty mm -hmm. minutes or whatever like that, two or three times a week, and you're, you're gonna sustain yeah. quite a bit. And you know, I've seen arguments. I've actually seen arguments, and they're pretty compelling that you might actually make better gains if you take uh, a month off every year right for someone who's super super consistent i've seen that argument there was a, the pro bodybuilder kevin lavrone he used to actually do that he would mm -hmm. take a lot of time off lose lots of muscle and then he'd like gain into the pre-contest and of course he's one of the best bodybuilders well, especially of all time. if it you, makes a lot of sense especially if you do it with intention right like it's not like you go off and you eat like an asshole for a month and yeah. you're not active. But if you're physically active and you're, yeah, you're like, things, okay, this month I'm going to go. Yeah. And I'm still, yeah. and I'm still eating like that. I, body would probably respond very well to that and would do them, do them well. You know, yeah. our next caller is Allie from Maryland. Hi, Allie. How can we help you? Hi guys. Um, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, Sal, I'm just getting into your book, but I I use your info from the podcast um, when I'm talking to my nutrition clients uh, when they ask about cardio for fat loss. So thanks for that insight. Oh, I appreciate cool. it. I actually wrote it, but he keeps taking credit um, for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Uh, my question is, as a female body power lifter, what are some of the correctional exercises that I could use to better engage uh, my lat muscles and not overuse traps or lower back. Um, so a little history, I wear a belt. I practice with Boris deadlifts, rack pulls, and stiff leg deadlifts. My accessories are typically rows and shoulder presses, um, but I have issues feeling the connection to my lats on conventional deadlifts. So that's my question, and thanks for your help with this one. Okay, what, what what's a Boris deadlift? I'm you got to school me here. Um, so Boris deadlift is a deadlift to the knees, and uh, oh. then you so you lift to the knees, and then you go back down to got the it. floor. Okay. So. Got it, got it, all right, all right. Boris style. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. yeah. <laughs> no, that's new to me. I've actually <laughs> never, I didn't know that. I've, I've never, never heard of it. Before. Yeah, I've never heard term that. Okay. You know something with uh, power lifters that you sometimes see, uh, not as common today, but uh, you used to see this all the time. Is they don't do any direct lat work like pull downs because uh, pull downs are considered a bodybuilding exercise. Um, so if you're not doing any pull downs, whether it's a uh, supinated grip or even wide grip, I suggest adding those into your routine so you can do some direct lat work. Now, as far as maybe priming, 
prone cobra is a great mm. exercise to activate the lats if you do it properly. When you do the prone cobra, you have to think about the action of the lats, which is to bring the humerus back and then also bring the – not only are you squeezing the shoulders back, but you're also squeezing them down. So you're avoiding – that shrugging position. It's a good priming movement because that's exactly what you want to do before you deadlift if you want to feel the lats is you want to be able to pull them down and back to activate them to give you that, you know, that stability. Now, do you do you have this problem, Ali, too, even with the cue? Have you heard the cue bend the bar before you lift? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So um I typically try like when I pull on the bar before I lift, um, I try to focus on that pinching. Um, like I, I try to cue that pencil between the lats feeling so like pinch the lats together but then like on the lift itself like i just miss that connection so I, like, are my you brain depressing the shoulder blades down as well so after you you go ahead and like retract your shoulders are you also then you know packing your shoulder blades down and and, and turning like your hands out yeah, the, the, that's a good question that Justin's asking because it sounds, especially if you're feeling it a lot in your traps and your rhomboids, what you might be doing is you might be kind of shrugging up when you when right. you pinch. The, if you're trying to pinch the pen, pencil, you might be actually kind of squeezing yeah. uh, the shoulder blades back versus more like tucking your, like I think about putting my elbows in my back pocket. Um, I, another thing that will help, that, so Sal talked about the... the um, prone cobra. No, prone cobra. I also would... I would take someone like this and actually do a, a, a dumbbell pullover right before they go into a, a deadlift. So I would do a pullover with you to get you to really feel and activate the lats. And, you know, I'd probably do five five to eight reps of it with a, a moderately uh, heavy weight, not too heavy to where I don't want to fatigue you, but I just want you to really feel those lats and then I would go right into the conventional deadlift. Yeah, I'm gonna too. I'm gonna I'm gonna add something to that. Instead of a pullover, do a straight arm pull down with a rope because the, the reason you why, gotta get the squeeze. Okay, the reason why I challenge that is because if she has a hard time engaging lats, the stand the gravity is working to her favor in the pullover. It's a and it, it, the, and the activation will be in the stretch. I though. know, but the the straight arm pull down, I know you like that one. We we've debated this before it's one of those exercises that people tend to have sometimes a hard time engaging the lats mm -hmm. they do tricep work and they push down on shoulders the shoulders and triceps because they have a hard time engaging them. now if you understand how to engage the lats i feel like it's well, the, and that's the point the point is in the deadlift think of where the lats are engaged it's not in the stretch position it's mm -hmm. in that shortened position where she'll need to connect to you're right but the stretch position is, is cues it mentally is why so it right. forces you to cue it where because you're in the stretch position well, it's that rotation too of the pinky and the thumbs turning up and so yeah. if you're doing that within your prone cobra that's really what you're emulating on the bar the bar just obviously doesn't move but you have to kind of think in that in those terms of of rotation uh to and then depression to get those shoulders. and by the way no we're arguing here but none of these are wrong ali i mean yeah. all, all these uh, things were thrown at some you are just more right than others <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, all joking no all joking aside look here's the deal the lats do nothing to the scapula they don't bring the shoulder blades back that's right that's right that's so why I think, when you that's think, why I think she's pinching the, the yeah. pencil yeah, with her trap. That's not the lats, right? The lats uh, are these big, wide muscles that attach uh, at the humerus, right, the upper arm, and then they attach kind of you know near the spine and, and down the back. And what they do is they bring the humerus to the, the the closer to the body. So you can pinch your shoulder blades back all you want. That's not activating the lats. What activates the lats is it's getting those arms back and squeezing them down and back. You got to do that down and back motion. Yeah. So. If you do the straight arm pull down, like I was suggesting, when you get to the bottom, you got to go real light. When you get to the bottom, pull the shoulders down and back. Down and back is where you're going to start to activate the lats and squeeze them. And that's also what the deadlifts is yeah. going to look like. And where I'm going to try a bit wider grip as well, like a snatch grip. Like deadlift. a snatch grip. I have not. No. Oh, there you oh, go. That's, yeah. that's a great. That's a great call, Justin. Yeah, that that just see what that feels like because I know just like bringing my grip a bit wider, it helps to kind of force me in that position too. And then if you add again, like we've been talking about, like you know, getting those shoulder blades to to retract but depress, so bring them down in that wider position, you might have a little better chance of activation. But what Sal is saying is definitely correct. You're in the because you, you already said it. Like you're trying to pinch the pencil. You're you're doing a row. 
You know, so you're you're pinching with your your traps. You're pinching with your traps and your rhomboids. You're not actually pinching with your lats. And so that cue is actually probably not helping you to think that way. And what Sal is trying to get you to do with the the straight arm pull down is to get you to think of your lats activating. The only thing I'm going to challenge him on is that in my experience, when I try and teach someone a straight arm pull down, it's a, it's a little more technical exercise because they have to engage the lats to do it. And if you just go through the movements, you might not feel it. And that's why I like the dumbbell pullover because in that stretch position, you are not going to do a dumbbell pull over your head and not fill your lats. You will be forced to right. because gravity is pulling against you in the stretch position. And that's what I would want to cue. And so maybe you combine them, right? So maybe you do the dumbbell pullover so you can feel those lats the way you're supposed to. And then you, you think about that when you go to the exercise, Sal is saying to really engage them even more and then go to your deadlift. Do you, do you have maps prime by the way, Allie? I do have maps. I have like all of your programs, oh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> except Prime Pro. That's the only one I don't have. Well, yet. try try the prone, prone Cobra and really pay attention to the form and the technique. There's no resistance on it, uh, but your own body weight, and it might help you start to connect a little bit to the lats. Here's the beauty of this: once you start to connect, it gets way easier. It's that initial connection. Uh, part that can that can be real difficult. I, I really like what Justin said too with the the snatch grip deadlifts, especially if you don't do them. I think it's a, it's a great uh, movement for someone that's a power lifter too, just to add into your routine. So, uh, and it's really tough to do a snatch grip and not fill your lats. It kind of forces you in that position. If you if you if you stay in a rigid rigid spine while you're in a snatch grip, I mean those lats are going to fire yeah. for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, Allie. All right. It's been a while since we had that argument. Yeah, it's funny. You, you, we, you remember we had that one a long time that ago? That was a long time you know ago. What, you know where I got that from? I, no, it, you're not wrong. You're right. You are right. I Just in my experience, uh, straight arm pull downs yeah. were a little bit harder. There to, is a challenge there. Yeah, do you agree? Because, yeah, do you agree because, with me? Because yes. I know you never fucking take a side. Do you agree? Uh, I agree. Well, the thing, because it's They're both. both right. the, yeah, yeah it's go. stupid. Because it's, <laughs> it's hard to get people to not to get past the triceps. Uh, when you are going, you know, your straight arm pull down. So, so if you can get past that part of it and that portion, you can really direct them to, you know, feel a uh, connection there with the shoulder blades well, depressing, the, the, then you'll feel your lats. Well, However, the triceps stabilize. They stabilize in both exercises. But here's where I got that from. I got that from a physical therapist that worked with me and she showed me that. Well, mechanically speaking, you are correct. I'll concede that. Mechanically speaking, you're correct. I'm talking behaviorally. And what I've seen in my past, when I tell somebody who doesn't know how to fire the lats to go into a movement and fire the lats, here's a straight arm pull down because it's the best thing to fire the lats. Yeah. I see the forward shoulder and the arms going forward and the pushing down of the shoulders yeah. and the triceps to do that movement. Whereas if I put a person and I could take an advanced age, never lifted weights before, put you in the stretch position, just hold the dumbbell. Can you feel those lats? Yeah. They'll be they'll they'll force them. I'm to on fire. team prone cobra. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, I'm all for that. I mean, no matter what though, you, you, if you're this person, you really should experiment with almost everything yeah. we're saying, and you do yeah. what works yeah. best for you to mm -hmm. get them fired. Our next caller is Brian from Texas. What's going on, Brian? How can we help you? Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Good. Um, so, so I'm 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 kind of long and thin. And I've never had a lot of success building muscle. Um, I'm product of a lot of the, the things y'all talk about. A lot of bad information and bad form, and you know, just an attitude to do more. It'll get better and stay in the gym till I'm sore and beat up every day. Um, but, uh, you know, down the road, I've let myself go to crap in my thirties and forties. And a little over a year ago, um, finally got it together, lost about 50 pounds and got to a point where I wanted to build some muscle and kind of went back to those same problems I was having before. Just wasn't having a lot of success. And I found your podcast at just the right time. Um, you know, you've helped me answer part of that equation, which was stop swimming six miles a week uh, was the first step. But once I bought one of your fitness bundles and got into the Max Prime section, I realized I got a lot of muscle imbalances as well and mobility issues. Um, so before I moved into a more advanced course, I really kind of started myself out just doing pre-primers, fortification, and post-primers three days a week with mobility sessions on the performance section in between. So seven days a week, just mobility. And my question is, 
is this the right approach um, to focus solely on these mobility issues, or should I be incorporating um, one of the foundational programs in there to help me reach my goal of building muscle and address, addressing these mobility issues? Uh, that's for, a really first of all, that's really really smart. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, um, there's a misconception that mobility and correctional work doesn't make you stronger. The reason why you get better at mobility work and correctional work as you practice it is precisely yeah. because you're building strength. You're just building strength in targeted ways to improve your the way that you move. Now, if you were my client, this is exactly what I would do. When, if, when I took a client mm -hmm. and I identified lots of mobility and, mo and, and movement issues, that's all we focused on for a little while because that's the fastest way to improve. And it's the fastest way to get to the point where you can start to focus on heavier weight and compound lifts and that kind of stuff. So you're doing exactly yeah. what you should. You're be strengthening doing. the support system. You're 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 providing more stability amongst the joints, which then you can even load more as you get back into weight training. So I think it's just a misconception. People think they're regressing tremendously by just focusing on it, when in fact, uh, you know, it's a little bit longer uh, approach, but you're actually going to be accelerating your results this way. I'm actually really impressed by this, considering that you you'd admit that you were doing everything so wrong in the past and before and I think you and you've obviously not only have you you bought the programming so that you obviously listened to all the videos and read the content which sometimes people just buy it and then don't go mm -hmm. through all that stuff because mm -hmm. you where you went and where you started is exactly where I think all of us would that's how why we wrote it we wrote it with those intentions for someone just like you now of course eventually you'll want to start to move into some foundational stuff uh, and the way that would look is I would start you one day a week of anabolic. So I would keep doing everything you're doing and then trade out maybe one of those days or if I could add a day of like, a, you know, a foundational day for MAPS anabolic and see how you feel. See if you feel good when you squat. See if you feel good when you're doing these movements and and then start to build upon that. But what you're doing, you're, you're laying the perfect foundation. And to Sal's point, you are building muscle. You're just building very specific muscle to to work and uh, work on all those imbalances. Awesome. Right. And I've seen those. I've seen those results um, already, just just from going through the mobility. I've seen the strength gains, and I feel more stable in, in a lot of the lifts. Um, so yeah, that that's that's what I'm seeing, and and you know that's why I love y'all's information. It's it's so easy to buy in because you listen to what you say, and then then you see the results on the other end. Yeah, no, stay the course. You're doing ex awesome, you're man. doing the right thing. Stay the course and you'll get there and you actually get your goals faster. Are you are you actually Brian, are you inside um, our private forum? Um I'm sorry, what what do you mean? Like yeah, we have we have, I have a, a we have a we have a Facebook private forum. Are you I'm assuming you're not in it. No, I'm not. Okay, so I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have Doug give you. Well, now you are. That's right. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna have well, Doug give you access to it. It's on I Facebook, so I don't know if you use Facebook or not. Hopefully you do. Um, if you don't, hopefully you use it for this. But I would love to hear uh, your progress in there. There's, there's a community of people just like yourself plus us, uh, and then we have a lot of uh, PTs, nutritionists, a lot of really intelligent brilliant people in there. It's a great community where people are sharing their progress. And that way, if you have questions along your journey or you want us to look at your form when you do an exercise, uh, you can shoot it up there on that page and you'll and you'll get a response from one of us pretty quick, if not from another professional that's in there. So it's, I think it's a great value add to what you already have going for you. So uh, join, that, join that group. I'd love to see you in there. There you go. Will do. Will do. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation because people think mobility means, you know, oh, no, I'm not going to get there f fast enough or uh -huh. I'm not going to. The truth is you'll get there faster uh, by focusing on those things first. Because when I when we train clients, would you, I mean, if you had a client that you need to work on mobility and correctional exercise, you wouldn't do that and bodybuilding or that and powerlifting. Right, right. Yeah. It would be just it's counterproductive. That. Well, yeah. especially when he, I mean, he says he failed all three compass mm -hmm. tests. Yeah. So he knows he's got a lot of work. To, I mean, and he, I love hearing someone because this is an area where I think, I think a lot of people miss. They, um, they buy our prime program and they kind of like just, go over it real quick they don't yeah. really go into mm -hmm. it or they'll uh, do like one session and be like okay i get the whole and then they'll just jump right back to training yeah so what he's doing is is perfect man and he said it himself he's he's seeing the the difference i mean he's he knows he's built he's getting stronger he's getting more stable i mean that's the and honestly i would just continue down that path and then i'd probably start to flirt with 
one day a week of anabolic mm -hmm. just to see how I perform. Like, does the squat mm -hmm. feel good? Do, do I look like I'm moving well? Like, and, and then if that continues to progress, then I'd slowly start to add days from anabolic in there. Our next caller is Peggy from California. Hi, Peggy. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I just want to say thanks for all your podcasts. And I've really learned a lot from them. I'm sure you're tired of hearing that, but oh, that I'll let you know. Oh, we anyway. never get tired. That never gets old, yeah. Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've touched four, but my question has to do with golfers' elbows. And I can give you a little history if you want. Go for it. Let's Please. hear it. Okay. So I've been lifting since I was in my late 20s, 63 now, but I never did progressive overload and I never had a problem with elbows. So I just got off a four-day split, six-month um, coaching program online, and then I found you guys at the end, and I decided to do anabolic because my elbows were really hurting and I should have probably cut back before I did. So I, I'm on anabolic. I'm in phase one, week three. And my question is, should I be doing the bi curls? I can't do the um, barbell, but I can do the um, dumbbell curls. But I'm doing a slow, like 10 pounds uh, rep and then, you know, um, squeezing the bicep at the top. Should I continue that or should I stop those until my elbows heal a little bit more? Yeah. So two things you can do with that. Uh, one, you, you, you're definitely going to have to give them time to heal. So I would say avoid exercises that tend to bother it. And then number two, and this is just personal experience, really good deep tissue massage really made a huge difference for me in this area. And when I say deep tissue, I mean your, your forearms are on a massage table and the therapist is getting in there pretty deep and then you're icing them afterwards. This made a huge difference for me. But you're going to have to lay off a little bit on the exercises that are causing uh, the issue to allow it to heal and then slowly work your way back in because all the... The tight gripping, the heavy deadlifting, the heavy pulling. If the inflammation's there, it's not going to go away until you back off a little bit. Well, especially with dead, deadlifting, it bothers us big time. So uh, I just came off of dealing with this. Um, absolutely, Peggy, we need to have we need to get you Prime Pro. Uh, this is why this program was written. Uh, so Doug, we'll send that over to you. I actually have that. I'm oh. doing it. <laughs> okay. So and okay. So put a lot of energy and focus on the wrist and shoulder mobility. So okay. wrist and shoulder mobility, do that for sure before you get into your workout. You can also, I would actually change out the bicep curls for Zotman curls. So curls? Zotman uh -huh. curls, if you go to our, and if uh, Zotman curls, Z-O-T-T-M-A-N, if you go, if you go to our YouTube channel and, and just put in the search bar, put in mind pump Zotman curls, I believe Sal teaches those. In I there. did. Yeah. You teach them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, go in there, watch how, how we do them, replace the bicep curls with Zotman curls in there. That'll, that'll like help go, go real light. Yeah. Real light. Re this you is correctional. To. You're not doing it to work out your biceps. You got to go really, really light because any type of intensity on this area is just going to make it worse. But if you do a good job on the, on, and this is when you know you're doing prime pro correctly too, but the intent of it's very important, right? If you just kind of go through the movements and you don't challenge the end range of motion, uh, mm -hmm. you, you won't feel it. But if you do a good job, you actually should feel instant relief in that area. And, and it, you'll, and if you have one air, one side that's worse than the other, you should, you should see there's discrepancy in the wrist mobility on that side and, or the shoulder mobility on that side. And you just want to work on that. And that's something that you can do all day through the day. So right now I find myself, because this is something I was just recently battling, getting down uh, on all fours and doing the the wrist movements that we have in there. And it does, it, it instantly gives me relief. Now, if you also have the luxury of being able to have a massage mm -hmm. therapist, I, I would recommend that too, but you can definitely do a lot of, of work here just with your mobility stuff. Yeah, we'll definitely highlight the fact that we got to let them heal a bit. And, and you know, that's something that, uh, like, I think in terms of getting a deep tissue massage, it's great. Uh, but, you know, in terms of working out, like letting off a bit, but but taking this as an opportunity for when the inflammation does start to, to subside, that, uh, you know, you, you really implement a lot of those, like, prime pro type uh, movements for wrists and shoulders so that way you can prime yourself properly before going back into the to the workouts so you know this prop we can re we can sort of correct uh, the patterns that you had beforehand that was actually 
causing this uh, issue to occur. Yeah. One more thing, too. If you want to try a natural anti-inflammatory, this doesn't solve the problem, but it might help get you to the point where you feel better a little faster. You can try supplementing with bromelain. Just make sure you take it on an empty stomach. So two or three times a day, you could take some bromelain pills or capsules uh, on an empty stomach, so not with food. Otherwise, it acts totally different. And you should notice a significant improvement in the inflammation. But let it heal completely before you go back and start pushing the exercises. Don't wait until it feels a little better and then go work out because otherwise it's just going to, you're going to stay in you're the same place. You're going to be fighting it the whole time. Yeah. So the deadlifts actually aggravate it because that, this is my first time doing le deadlifts in the last six months and I really like them. Oh, well, I mean, so do I need to anything that involves needing a strong grip or that involves pulling will aggravate it. So just go real light. Practice the you, technique in the form. You, yeah. And the guys may disagree with me here. So the, I, again, I've been dealing with this right now. So what I did was, uh, this is where while I'm working on this for it to heal, I've been using wrist wraps when I do my deadlift. So, and and the thing you got to be careful of is that's a Band-Aid, temporary. I know that. It's not like you don't want to just forever now deadlift yeah. with wrist wraps. You want to address the issue. But if I, if... I'm trying to get ease back into my deadlifting. I'm still working on the the golfer's elbow, and so this just I just did this yesterday when I deadlifted. I just used my wrist wraps to help, so I don't put as much stress uh, on the golfer's yeah. elbow. So that's not a a permanent fix. That's a temporary fix while you work on this. Um, so try that too. Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Right. Yeah, those wrist wraps, man. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm dealing with this right now. No, so. I mean, it, it's like if you want to continue doing the mo movement, but you want to also lay off of the the muscles of the yeah. forearm. I mean, I mean, sense. it's a similar uh, you know thought process with with like physio tape, like where you're trying to sort of. Um, isolate the, the problematic type of movement or the muscles that respond to that uh, and, and calm them down while still being able to do some of the movements. So there's value in that in terms of like staying active and being able to do mm -hmm. movements, but still you got to bring the intensity down Dude, quite a bit. I'll tell you though, years ago, this was an issue and it was a challenge and I would get better and it get worse. And I had one, one and a half hour session with a massage therapist and all she did was work on my forearms and it was gnarly, oh, but yeah. I swear to God, one session gone, it was gone, completely gone yeah. within a couple of days. So it can make a pretty big impact uh, depending. No, on it makes a huge impact to get a nice massage like that. This is an, an er common area when I was bodybuilding that Katrina would have to work on all the time. And it just, be, but the main reason why she had to continue to work on it was because I didn't address the root cause, which sure. is the wrist mobility stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, even now you'll catch, I mean, right after she starts, you saw me doing this, like if you take it and hopefully she's on the YouTube channel so she can watch this where I'll just take in the contracted position, right? Contract my bicep in the fully contracted position. And then I'm going to rotate my wrist as hard as I can on both directions. At the end range of motion, I'm trying to challenge turning it all the way. You can do this all day long, mm -hmm. you know, so and mm -hmm. try and do that. It's like a pageant wave. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. hello, but the Jackie Kennedy. But the really. key to this, you know, when when we teach mobility stuff, that I think where people go wrong is they just they do this, right? They just go through and they stop at the end range, where the, the where the relief will happen is yeah. taking to the end range and challenging, trying to continue to rotate it and yep. intensifying that. Yep, yep. There you go. Look, if you like our information, uh, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have a lot of free stuff that we provide people. I mean, literally tons and tons of guides. They can help you with almost everything, and they cost nothing. It's something we give away to our fans. Again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram, so you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Are there some generic parameters as far as what you would tell them? To, you know, stay your saturated fat under this, or the, the, it should be only this. You person. know, it really doesn't even matter. So here's the other thing: if you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight. You're good. Everything else makes no difference. Like all your cardiovascular risk factors that we can measure go down. Like they've done studies where people are in a 